couple of things have happened since the last chapter. I played a little bit behind scenes because it was uh, most likely a situation in which we had Baden-Württemberg here. Right now, this area is now controlled by Prussia. I'm going to talk about what happened here. And we have right now separated F France from us uh, pretty much a lot. So what, what we are doing right now is here I have the Karl von Ostreich Teschen, the Emperor's brother, uh, waiting here in in Bavaria. I, we have a couple of agents because we made we developed this into a Masonic lodge, which obviously is going to spawn spies all over the place. So we have a lot of them. And before continuing the movement and explaining a little bit what happened i want to talk about some cards that are very interesting this in comparison with the normal hussar is everything but one point better in melee attack charge bonus defense and morale so basically we are getting a an upgrade version of the normal hussars that you can find here for example in this army if we, if you remember we were uh, this is the normal Hussar, and you can see how the other one is an upgrade of of the one that you are looking right now. We were uh, recruiting another Hussar for Andreas Hofer, so right now under Andreas Hofer is here. We have another full stack with with Karl Teschen, and finally we have this one in which this guy is a historical general indeed Karl Philipp Schwarzenberg and perhaps one two three four five he has five in comparison in comparison with this one actually he lost a little bit of uh, stars in between chapters I believe I remember that this guy was uh, stronger so, continuing with the situation here, I have, as you can see here, we have a, a lot of um, militia here. The reason that I have a lot of militia is because I want this area not to be problematic in the fact that here I'm building factories. If you remember, this was a region in which I said that is going to become the industrial area of the of the empire and here i'm building steam pumped iron mine talking about this this is because we already had the steam engine which allows us to build steam pumped iron mines and steam powered factories including gold mines and steam dry dock this is um dry docks which allow the factions here to build steam paddle frigates and steam ships of course this is uh, a little bit ahead on time in terms of the napoleonic wars but that's the beauty of napoleon Tour war in which you can deviate from from history and go technologically super high in comparison with history so that is where the fun begins because at the end that that's the fun isn't it so we got as well the joint stock company actually this one i exchanged with spain i have i had an exchange with with spain i don't really remember i can't be able to remember which technology i exchanged with spain but this one i got from spain which will give us uh, a lot of wealth and allow us to build banks then i finally got my standardized artillery which allow us to build engineering school and get ready for the for the actual where, where is it the experimental howitzer that we're waiting here with this army and basically this is what i'm doing here if i'm not mistaken yeah there you are 
two turns for for us to be able to build this and because of all of that technology and of course just before ending the situation here with technology we have as well modern rifles because modern rifles allow us to to build windbush jaggers which they are going to use rifled air guns instead of flintlocks it's going to be a very interesting uh, thing here to have and that is because we exchange this modern rifles we exchange this with the with the prussians i gave the prussians if i'm not mistaken if i remember correctly i gave them standardized artillery and dialectics and then we have the possibility here as well to start researching passports and national propaganda but as you can see these two are very very uh very very slow to research because they are very very ahead and the reason is because we we have built a supreme court here in vienna here in vienna we have um a lot of uh upgrades here that we have been doing grand opera house the supreme court which gives repression and gives a lot of bonuses and buffs to to the nation and of course we are just waiting for this general staff technology to be able to to be researched to be able to build the staff college that will allow us to build as i mentioned before the windbush jaggers and something very interesting the archduke ferdinand couriers these guys are perhaps the most powerful heavy cavalry that you're going to find in the austrian in the austrian faction they have a very good defense, very good charge bonus, and they have the greatest morale of all the of all the troops. I think there are other troops that are similar in terms of morale, if I'm not mistaken. Not even the dragoons. No, I'm. I think. Uh, I think not. I think these are basically the most powerful and with greatest morale that you're going to find. In, in here now they are the archdukes ferdinand meaning that they are here we have carl von von Teschen, and we have in italy ferdinand which here we got the archduke ferdinand which is this guy here so i'm going to send that when i am able to recruit to this general and then i'm thinking about what i'm going to do here if i'm going to recruit perhaps a yulan which is a lancer or perhaps a cheval leger. As far as far as that concerns, we are very very good. We're building our economy, building uh, a lot of uh, banking here. Here's merchant. Here's a merchant ha merchant house. Here we have the first banking house that we're going to build in the empire. We're building here uh, steam pumped iron man, as I mentioned before. I'm going to upgrade all of those. And yeah, if there is another thing that we're upgrading here is this. In here you have minus 6% recruitment cost for cavalry in the region. So if you have um, cheaper horses, and that is going to be good because we can recruit here the Hungarian Hussars. Sadly, um, of course, you don't have any any limit for, for the Grenzers and the Hungarian Hussars, but there are a lot of troops that you have limits and one of that troops is this one the first hussars so again as i mentioned before i'm going to talk about some cards here that are very interesting the cards that i want to talk about is the archduke charles legion the first regiment emperor's own the 47th czech regiment and and do a comparison in line infantry because these are the line infantry that we were able to to recruit with the last improvement that we did here with military academy as you can see here there they are so basically what we're doing here is getting the first regiment emperor's own which is very good in charge in charge bonus it has a melee attack comparable with the much much better than the german line infantry and comparable with the with the melee uh, attack from the hungarians 
and it has a very standard morale. The thing is that this guy, it could be in some aspects better than the Hungarians, or perhaps even the same. If I'm not mistaken, let me see if I can find a Hungarian here. In terms of defense, the Hungarian, this is a normal, I want to find a normal Hungarian here. This one here, perhaps, here we are. So a standard Hungarian has a defense of 11. It has better hand-to-hand um, -hand combat than, than the Emperor's own. But the Emperor's own has better morale. So this is going to excel in comparison with the Hungarians in morale and a little bit of charge bonus. Then we have uh, the best of the best, which is the 47th Czech Regiment. These Czech Regiments have the best charge bonus and defense over any line infantry that you are going to find in the Austrian Empire. These are very, 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 very neat for a line infantry and of course melee attack you can see that it goes further uh, in comparison with the hungarians and even the emperor's own and finally we got the archduke charles legion this is a mix of uh, and a more balanced unit that is going to be mixing a little bit of things from the 47 czech regiment and the Hungarians, so let's say that you mix this and the Hungarians and you're going to get this. But sadly, these units are just, you have a limit and you have you have one regiment to, to recruit and no more than that. So what is happening here is that we have a Prussia that has been uh, grown. They have taken Amsterdam and they have taken Brussels. We already know that they took Brussels, but they took this and they went aggressive against us and they declare war on Baden Wurttemberg. I decided not to mess with them because they are getting very aggressive and they have a lot of technologies. In the counterpart, I saw that Bavaria is in sandwiched in between us and them and I gave them a little bit of technologies, most likely the technologies that ha have to do with uh, military. So with that, I can stuff them with with good um, with good military so that way the Prussians are going to think better to attack them they have a very good army they have a lot of troops here they have almost one stack and a half something like that because there could be some others some other barbarians here I, I don't remember correctly and uh, the reason is that this could be a, a good moment to create a buffer state here but i'm going to be very angry of course if they attack switzerland because switzerland right now it's in it's in good terms with france and in good terms with me and this could pose a threat to us so with that being said uh, i think um i think we are ready to pass the turn here now here we see the the Russians. The Russians have taken this. They tried twice to take again Marseille, and they attacked the Spaniards. Up to this point, they managed to take this in the in the last turn. So uh, that is uh, one point for the Russians here. So let's uh, send this guy here to the north, and let's see what the French are going to do here. Haven't seen Napoleon yet, so. Uh, we don't know what uh, uh, what they are doing. They don't want to uh, cease fire with me, so we are still at war with them, and we need to build our economy to be able to um, at least buy Brussels and Silesia, and that I'm going to call a win. So let's get on with the turn. I have turned off the follow the CPU CPU moves to to make the turns pass more quickly. So, agent recruited, George Merck is a gentleman, he's here. Let me see what he, what he has here. He, is, he's, he gives religious unrest, so it's okay. So, I'm going to send him right now in Florence. I'm getting this. So, this is the one that I want to research faster. So, it's going to be okay to send him here. Let's see that that is going to help. Of course, now we're going to get this in eight turns, which is pretty good. We got the stud farms in Hungary, and then Martin Lange, which is a spy, gains a trade local contacts here. 
because that's something good that we did as spy network here in Silesia. We're getting the the money here, which is good. I just want to monitor the thing here because we don't want another revolution. And that's it for now. So let's end the turn. Another construction here, the Ordnance Board. This allows us to recruit the experimental howitzer. So I'm going to recruit a couple of this. It's going to take a little bit. And of course I'm going to do infrastructure here. Actually it's not necessary because this area is not so big. So the two experimental howitzers are going to be added here for Carl Philipp Sch Schwarzenberg. And there you are. We need a lot of... Uh, we need a lot of... A lot of um, public order here. So let me see. Then I can go here and steam part factory, which will increase... It will decrease the happiness. So, so far, as you can see, we're zero here, even though we have this amount of militia here so i'm not going to i'm not going to do that as for right now this as well is going to take happiness from the lower classes so up to this point we are in a checkmate in terms of technology so we're going to leave it like that getting six turns here we got uh isidore kreuzberg a gentleman dusty librarian he got a dusty librarian here here, here you have it. Exiled Nobleman, which gives plus 5 chance of assassination and 2 chance of assassination. I believe this is because if he is going to duel with someone or I know it says that plus 5% to chance of assassination. So he could be assassinated more, more easily. And then this here, can we go ahead and build a mine here? It's going to take minus one happiness, which is okay. We can we can handle that here. Even if I go up with this, we're okay. So we are with this agent with this spy. I'm trying to f to. Trying to get him into France and try to localize the the place in which Napoleon is apparently hiding. So we got the merchant house here in Budways. We can get these. This is going to be good for us. Another bank here. So two banks, uh, one near the other is going to get us a lot of money so far we're good so there where we we reach rhymes here so let's see what is going to be the situation here in brazil's So let's see here. Perhaps Napoleon is here. No, actually he's not. Let me move him. Let me move this spy here. If it's possible to assassinate Gerard Duro. Couldn't infiltrate here. But it's okay. I want to have a look at what is Prussia doing here? So, still waiting for those. 
another four turns. We are in early June. Oh, there you are. This is Napoleon attacking Piedmont Liguria, suddenly coming down from the Alps as if the ancient stories of Hannibal Barca. Look at this. He's demanding surrender. No, this is this is crazy. He just appeared there. So the, yeah, Britain is giving me coronade if we are going to join war against Spain. No thanks, because I don't have any ships. So this is very interesting right now. Napoleon attacking me here. Okay, so now this is going to last for four turns. Now th this was very very interesting move from from the AI. The Rum Punishing Rebellion. An armed insurrection has taken place in New South Wales, Australia, and the New South Wales Corp have deposed the governor, one William Blight. Blight is well known as a harsh and uncompromising disciplinarian who always carries out his duty to the letter, and this is the second time a mutiny has taken place in response to, to aspects of his command. Following typical Typically draconian moves to prevent circumvention of the laws surrounding the manufacture and distributions of alcohol to the corpse, Blight found himself arrested at home by the corpse led by Captain Johansen. Once the acting governor Joseph Fovio arrived, he sent Johnson and his associates for, for court martial, and Blight was given command of a ship an order to return to England to give account of his actions. Instead chose chosen to sail to Tasmania to raise support for an armored coup to recapture the colony, Blight was surprised that he that the governor of Tasmania did not support him, and he was confined to his ship until it was recalled to England. For his part in the rebellion, Johnson was eventually cashiered a lenient penalty under their circumstances, but reflecting the the bloodiness nature of the events. Blight was criticized for his handling of the affair, yet promoted to rear admiral. It is interesting to note that since the affair occurred, the British authorities have given the governor ship of the colonies exclusively to army officers instead of those from the Royal Navy. So we got one experimental experimental howitzer here to send with Schwassenberg and the trade gain Martin Lunch again friends in, in the government here because he's he's doing things here in in Silesia. Okay, interesting thing about Napoleon, look at this. So we can send this guy here directly and attack him. It's going to be a tough battle. We can take some guys from here. We can just... Or we can just go ahead. So I think I'm going to attack Napoleon here. Or perhaps let's, let's talk with him and tell him, okay, my friend, let's do a trade agreement. I'm going to give you... Oh, standardized artillery is going to be good for for them. Let me see. Let's do this and give him uh, a payment of 3,000. Perhaps he's going to accept. He doesn't. Okay, request peace, trade agreement, and a payment of 5,000. And lastly, a payment of 6,000 with no trade agreement, so he don't want. He is uh, determined to get a fight with me, so Archduke Ferdinand is going to be the one that is going to attack him. There we go. So we're getting ready here to attack Napoleon. So I think we're going to do that.
Let's see if we can exchange some technologies with with Prussia here. I have these and these, and they have nothing. Ah, oh, general staff. This could be this could be interesting. Steam engine and joint stock companies. Let's let's try just this. Therefore, no. But if I take two and give them, if I give them two and they give me one. They're not going to accept. Let me see. Last chance. This, this, and these, and I'm going to pay you three thousand. Wow, they want a lot. Let's do the five thousand that I wanted to give to Napoleon, and exchange this because this is time that we're going to need, and they don't want. At the end, we are doing it in three turns, so there's no harm in doing that. So. Let me see here, finally, if I can do something interesting. I can go here and trading port. Okay, let's uh, sabotage this trading port here. And let's bring him back. Now let's take the battle here against Napoleon. Let's get on with it. Ooh, this is going to be a very, very tough battle indeed. So if you are liking what you are seeing, if you like my content, give a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see more, I invite you to see the next chapter in which we're going to fight Napoleon that tried to sneak into the Alps and attacked us in Piedmont. I am Victus. See you in the next one.